Now we're going to chat about how to enter your Etsy fees into your spreadsheet. And this is going to apply whether you're using the Etsy seller spreadsheet or the Etsy import add-on. Again, I will be using the Etsy seller spreadsheet in my example, but other than seeing those additional tabs that you don't have on the import add-on, everything works exactly the same, regardless of which spreadsheet file you purchased. So you've imported in your Etsy order CSV, you've got your sales in here, you've got your Etsy credit card processing fees in here. What about the rest of the money and the fees that you pay Etsy for running your shop? We're gonna cover how to enter and find those in this video. In general, I want you to be aware because many of us are not. Etsy charges you at a minimum three different fees. The first is that Etsy credit card processing fee. We've already imported that guy in here. We're good to go with that one. That is usually 3% plus 25 cents per order total in the US. The percentage changes if you're selling inter if you're an international seller, but that's what the charge is in the US. The second one is a 5% transaction fee. You can consider that Etsy's commission basically on your sale. That's the cut that they get for allowing you the honor and privilege of selling on Etsy.com. Um, the 5% transaction fee is charged on your sale total and on your shipping received from your customer. So if you are looking at a fee CSV, it's actually gonna show up as two different charges, 5% of shipping received, 5% of the sale amount. That one is not listed on your order CSV, so we're gonna find it next. And then the third fee is your Etsy listing fee. That's 20 cents every time you list or renew your product in your shop. So let's talk about how to find those latter two fees. So you wanna be in your shop manager and click on finances and go to payment account. Once on your payment account screen, you can scroll down and go to a monthly statement for whatever time periods month you're gonna look at. I'm gonna click on last three months and then I'm going to have access to February 2019. That's what I'm gonna use for this example. So we've got our sales circle here, which you can totally ignore and your fees and taxes circle here. Now just a quick note about your sales circle. Do not be alarmed if this number doesn't look anything like what you just imported for your Etsy sales. This sales cir circle here is your Etsy sales minus your credit card processing fees. So it is not truly your gross revenue or your gross sales. It's really just a made up number, honestly. They're subtracting your credit card processing fees and showing you net sales. So don't even pay attention to this number, honestly. Over here, we can pay some attention to your fees and taxes circle. Now on that note, as of right now, they have reported many instances of glitches and bugs related to these two circles. What we have learned up to this point is that Etsy is pretty much telling us that these numbers are are potentially unreliable as sums. It will vary by seller, but I've seen cases where, you know, 10 random days from the month are not included in your sales or your fee circle, or there's timing issues, or things are just for whatever reason not counted accurately. And, it, and it's really difficult to know for sure. In my case, I've noticed that so far my fees in Texas circle has been accurate when I reconcile it back to my fees as CSV, but I can't say that's going to work across the board for everyone. So what I will say is that in general to enter your listing and transaction fees on your Etsy seller spreadsheet, you can look at this fees circle. And if you know it's reliable for you, you can enter the sum of these two amounts on that row. But I would encourage you to verify that these fee sums are indeed correct for that month, especially if you're new at doing your books, because it seems to be reliable about 50% of the time and not accurate the other 50% of the time. So how can we check that these numbers are correct? You wanna download this CSV here. This is the only place you can find this fees CSV as far as I know. So once you're on the billing statement screen, for the specific month you're looking at, click this CSV button and download that CSV file. When you open it in your spreadsheet software, again, hopefully it looks like this where it's sorted into columns for you. 
If you're working in Google Sheets, now this is Excel, but I do know that if you're working in Google Sheets, sometimes it seems to have this issue in Google Sheets with this particular CSV where they're not formatted as numbers, so the spreadsheet won't sum it in Google Sheets. So if you're working in Google Sheets, you want to highlight these three rows so that they're all selected and then go to your currency format to make sure that Google Sheets knows that these are indeed numbers and will add them up for you. If you're in Excel, you probably don't have to do that, but that's an added step that you may need to check on in Google Sheets. So once you've got your fees CSV open in whatever spreadsheet software you're working with, I want you to highlight all this data and sort it by type. How do we do that? You can click on this little cell right here above row one and to the left of column A and clicking on that one little box right there will highlight your entire tab of data. Once it's all highlighted, click on your funnel button up here. This is actually filtering. So if you see a button that looks like a funnel, that's what you wanna click on. Or you can even go to data filter. And once you have that turned on, you will see these little drop down buttons next to each column header. Now we can filter by type. So click the little drop down button next to type and go to ascending. I'm gonna sort it, but you can filter if you'd rather. Filtering means that I'm gonna show to see only a certain type of transaction here, like maybe just my listing fees. Um, or you can just do, or you can just show everything and just sort it by ascending order so it groups things together. So remember the point of doing all this is just to verify whether or not these totals are correct or not. We're going to assume and hope at least that the CSV is more accurate than this tricky circle itself. So first let's verify whether our listing fees are here correctly. So I have sorted by type and I'm just gonna go to, I'm gonna stay in column G, I'm going to click my first listing fee and I'm gonna click and drag all the way down until I'm done with listing fees. So I've got a lot of listing fees. Okay, oh, great, there's the last one. Once I have them all highlighted, assuming the spreadsheet knows that they are numbers and it's formatted as numbers, uh, I can see the sum down here in the bottom area of my spreadsheet software. Google Sheets and Numbers should do this for you as well. So I can see my sum of listing fees is 1560 on the CSV and that matches what's reported on my circle. Now I'm gonna repeat that same process for my transaction fees. And I have filtered to see only transaction fees, so I'm actually just gonna select all of column G this time instead of clicking and dragging. And that's telling me that my transaction fees are 166.06, which is what my fee circle is reporting for me. So based on that, I feel pretty comfortable relying on the amounts in this month's fee circle. What I'm gonna do now is enter those fees from that circle on my light green Etsy fees tab on my spreadsheet now. You may wonder, okay, what date should I give this transaction? We're looking at February fees. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. And I know that I just showed you numbers for February 2019, but just pretend I was showing you February 2020 since that's what we're using in this example. But I would probably suggest doing the last day of the month for whatever year you wanna enter in. I think technically there's 29 days, I don't know, in 2020 in February. Um, you could also do the first of the month, you could do the middle of the month. You can really do whatever date of the month you want. Um, but I'm going to enter those two fees that I had. This is, I guess, technically I'll put the vendor as Etsy and the description is gonna be listing fees. And then same thing for those transaction fees. And you may also have other fees that you see on that fee circle which we'll talk about in a second, but the sum of all fees that I enter on this tab for February are gonna travel over to my February uh, lime green row right here. Uh, so I'll see the total of the fee circle right here because those are the only two types of fees that I had. 
Now chances are you have some other types of fees showing up here. Shipping is a big one. If you buy your shipping labels through Etsy, then you'll see your shipping fees, your postage label expense show up here as well. You wanna just rinse and repeat that same thing. Filter for just your shipping type of transaction. Sum up the column of all your shipping fees. And then you wanna enter that on your postage expense tab. We're gonna cover how to use these tabs real soon, but you could enter one lump sum for the entire month and just give it a date for like the last day of the, the month if you want, or any date in the month is really fine. Let's say I had um, $72.50 for shipping. I'd enter the date, the shipping amount, and a quick description of that and then that amount will flow to my february column for my postage cost row on the monthly summary tab if you've got any sort of marketing or advertising expense here if you pay for promoted listings or if you pay for you know the the Google shopping ads or the weird coupon code things that Etsy does these days you will see that showing up here you can enter, you can verify that the same way on your fee CSV and then enter that on your advertising tab on your Etsy seller spreadsheet. If you have things like pattern or Etsy plus or Etsy premium showing up here, you want to enter that as well. You may choose to enter that as an advertising expense or put it under the other tab or something like that to classify it how you see necessary and make sure you enter that. Basically, any fee you have showing up here, now is the time to first verify it on your fee CSV and then enter it in your Etsy seller spreadsheet as an expense. I'm hoping that eventually Etsy will stop having so many glitches and bugs with this fee circle and we'll be able to start skipping the step of having to download this CSV and verify it first and you'll just be able to enter things straight from the circle into your Etsy seller spreadsheet. But for the time being, I think it's probably most safe to download the CSV and verify it first.